come up with the idea. And, and all the neighbors would come. I need someone to walk through this. I have an idea. He knows the guitar. He never He would laugh when I would do Shakespeare or something. And he got to that place. We finished the scene. Well, I'm Sally Kellerman, and I grew up in the San Fernando Valley in, in the California, USA. And I was a cowgirl, a, a tomboy, climbing trees and hanging out in orange groves. Well, I lived in a one-horse uh, Mexican town called San Fernando, and we went to did all kinds of interesting things at the mission and, I don't know, fiestas and things like that, where I got the love of Mexican food and hot sauce and... And then in the middle of the beginning of my high school years, we moved to the town. And I said, well, where, where is the town? We moved to Los Angeles. I came out of the womb singing and acting. And uh, in grammar school, my best friend wrote plays, and I always added a song, and I got to star in them. It never occurred to me that she didn't want to. I thought, God, that was so nice of her to let me, you know, the starring they were probably five minutes long. And, my dad's some like VO commercial song or something, you know. And my mom loved to tell about how I'd put freckles on my nose and get on my roller skates and try to be Betty Hutton singing and get your gun, you know. And, uh, I always wanted to be an actress and a singer. Always needed to be, you know. I always say to people, you know, when they think, well, maybe I'd like to be an actor, or maybe I'd like to sing, hey, don't do it, you know, unless you have to, mm. because. Uh, it's full of challenges, and you know you gotta you gotta get that hair on your chest, you know, for the rejection <laughs> period of your lives, and and uh, so I've always needed to do it, no doubt about it. I I don't know why I like to tell this on myself, but uh, when I was little again, I said I'm when I'm gonna have a wedding, and I'm gonna have 300 people, so everyone can see how pretty I am. I thought, boy, you knew I was gonna be an actress then, right? <laughs> and an actress we call actors now, you know, but. Uh, well, yes, when I was, now I was uh, in high school, I always, in junior high, I always put trios together and things like that and sang and all the events, mostly giggled, but, you know, but uh, sang. And, uh, but when I was really serious and said, I'm going to be an actress, I was raised in Christian science. My mother would have rather I been a nurse, you know, than going to show business, you know, really. And, but on the other hand, they were very supportive. They came to every, I had my first play, I had one line. They came, they brought their friends. My first television was a, a live show and I had one line and they called everyone they knew and I was like, oh, daddy, that's so embarrassing. Fine, we'll turn it off. I go, no, don't turn it off, you know. Uh, no, they were very supportive, ultimately. They really were. They were just worried because they didn't know how I'd... Uh... My mother was from Arkansas and she... Uh, and I had relatives, aunts that I never met that, that wrote songs and led the parades and things in this small town in Portland, Arkansas. And, uh, and my mom was voted the most talented because she played the piano. And uh, when I was little growing up, she taught piano. And uh, I didn't learn because I could have been a, you know, I could have been a contender, man. If I'd only learned to play the piano, all my money, you know, went right to, it goes right to the keyboard guy. Really, you know, I had, I had learning issues anyway. I really have uh, had, you know, all through school, I just... Uh, sit there and sleep or you know I went in a singer and an actress I came out of high school and a singer and actress you know and, and everything in between so you know which I didn't realize at the time was uh, too bad you know I mean always knowing what I wanted to do and having a passion for my music and for, for acting was a great thing when I was younger. It's great to be able to know what you want to do. You know, well, I, I grew up in the country, in the valley, the San Fernando Valley, and then just in the 10th grade, we moved to, to town, and I went to Hollywood High. And everybody always thinks, oh, there must have been lots of movie stars and everything. There, there weren't, but actually, <clears throat> two of my best friends, one knew Norman Granz, who was the head of Verve Records, which was a huge, you know, in the 50s and 60s, was a huge... Uh, jazz label, Verve, and she took a demo. I used to sing with this group, the Four Preps in high school and stuff, and they, they were the, the Four Preps, and they went out and made records and stuff, but me and my friend would moonlight with two of the guys, you know, we'd sing like the four freshmen. And uh, anyway, Lincoln Mayorga was the keyboard guy, and we made demos in my living room, and my friend took it to Verve, and I got my first deal at Verve Records. 
but I never recorded, and I, I was probably so neurotic and scared, really. You know, I was scared. So right out of high school, the summer I was out of high school, I went to Jeff Corey, and my, my classmates were Jack Nicholson, Robert Blake, James Coburn, Roger Corman, who started Copeland and all kinds of different, you know, directors, and, and uh, Carol Eastman, who wrote Five Easy Pieces. Twelfth grade, I I got to play the mother in a play, and uh, and therein began my career. I went right into study with a great teacher and did plays in a little church or any place I could, and got little parts in television. And a man named Joe Stefano discovered me, and my first Outer Limits was the thing that really gave me a great lift and and great roles in television in uh, in the 60s. And then Robert Altman, uh, at a meeting, said, I'll give you the best part in the picture, and he cast me as Hot Lips, and I was nominated for an Academy Award and a Golden Globe, and that started my film career. It took me the 12th grade to tell anybody that I really wanted to do these things. So right out of high school, when I told my friend uh, Norma Jean Nielsen that I wanted to really be an actress, and she said, well, then if you're really serious, you have to go to, to uh, Jeff Corey. So right out of high school, the summer I was out of high school, I went to Jeff Corey. And my, my classmates were Jack Nicholson, Robert Blake, James Coburn, Roger Corman, who started Copeland and all kinds of different, you know, directors, and, and uh, uh, Carol Eastman, who wrote Five Easy Pieces. And uh, I can't even think of all the people that, that were in this class, and my best friend, Luana Anders, and just such a, it was an exciting time. Jeff Corey was so creative and he, we paid $10 a month or $10 a week, I'm not sure, but he wanted actors to be able to have the opportunity to learn, you know. And uh, he was the first man that said I was talented and I guess I really had tremendous low self-esteem because uh, he said that I really should see uh, a psychiatrist or an analyst or whoever, you know, whatever we call them, and uh, because he just really sensed that I, I didn't like myself and he thought I was really talented. And uh, I was so lucky to work with a, with a teacher who just organically, you know, uh, looking at things in, in different ways, looking at people in different ways. So I think that most of my learning was more by osmosis, you know. Oh, and, you know, in life, particularly as an, an actor, you know, you're either too young or too fat or too short or too, you know, now you're too old or you're too, you know, there's always a reason. But I don't know, you know, as I say, I guess that's why I always say don't do it unless you have to because there's just so much of that. But if you have the passion and you really need to do it, you just go ahead, you just stupidly or in any way that you can, you know, I don't know, somehow. And then I started doing small, really small parts in television and things. And then uh, some, at some point during my television of little parts, a guy, a man came in named Joe Stefano who wrote the screenplay of Psycho and he produced a series called The Outer Limits. And I was working as a waitress and uh, and he, he came and said, I saw you in a play six months ago. I can't believe the growth is amazing. And I made you this series. And, I, and as he left, I thought, yeah, sure, I'll be in the restaurant the rest of my life, you know. And then he sent me a script. The part is Ingrid. The magic is yours. And that was really the beginning of my doing great roles in television. And he did two with me. And the cameraman and operator were Bill Fraker, William Fraker, and Conrad Hall, two of the greatest cinematographers that we've it was such a love fest and everything. So then I started doing a lot of really great television, Chrysler's and Kraft and all kinds of things during the 60s. And, and uh, desperate to get in the movies because I'd always wanted to be, you know, when I was a kid, I was going to be a movie star, you know, never mind an actress, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, so anyway, I'd done a little part in The Boston Strangler and a little something with Jack Lemmon, tiny little roles. And, and before that, Reform School Girl was my first real movie. And, 
you know, different things along the way. And then uh, about 13 years into it, I went on a meeting to get the part of Lieutenant Dish in a movie called MASH. So even though my sister used to say, shut up, big lips, you know, and, and things like that and make me cry, I put on big red lips and off I went to this meeting. In the middle of it, Bob just said, uh, I'll give you the best part in the picture, hot lips. And I thought, oh, my God. I'm an I went out and I couldn't even find it in the script, you know. And so, but, uh, so I wasn't going to go back and see him, but I did. And he said, why don't you take a chance? Why, you know, and why does she have to leave the picture? So, uh, and he said, well, take a chance. You know, you could end up with something or nothing. And it was just one of the great, I would wish this for everyone. It was like summer camp, but they were filming. Not being the sharpest tool in the shed, and had this passion for my music that that when I finally did this thing that I'd wanted so much, you know, and got into the movies, I thought you arrived somewhere. I thought, you know, they sent you the flowers and the money, and you just stayed at home and you know baked cookies and. <laughs> And just at the moment I was being offered all the films and everything, I'd always, have always had a passion to sing and uh, so I turned movies down and get a, get a band and go on the road, came back 50,000 in the hole my first tour and um, made things more difficult for myself as an actress. Uh, probably because my choices seemed like uh, not so bright. You know, <laughs> and, uh, and Bob was just so creative and, and I, knew he, I knew he liked who I was. I knew he, that was really the beginning. He saw something in me, you know, that just made me love him all his life and all mine, you know. Uh, nothing like having somebody believe in you. <laughs> I knew that I felt kind of teary today, and this is going to be so embarrassing. <laughs> Bob died about two years ago, and uh, was a great friend. I'm very close with his wife and you know kids and everything like that. But I mean, that's I don't know why I'm crying. But you know, just like in love and, and with your mate and everything, it just makes such a difference, you know, in life. And so it it really did start me off in a great. Um, a great thing, but <laughs> unfortunately, not being the sharpest tool in the shed, and had this passion for my music that that when I finally did this thing that I'd wanted so much, you know, and got into the movies, I thought you arrived somewhere. I thought, you know, they sent you the flowers and the money, and you just stayed at home and you know baked cookies and <laughs> you know whatever, and uh, and uh, you'd see your picture on the cover of Vogue and you wouldn't have to take it, you know, and uh, like there was. Uh, a place to get to and there is no place to get to you know life is always evolving and always growing and and that's true of a career my husband is a producer and um, he was a partner of Travolta's for 15 years and they had about 700 million dollar films but man to keep that career sustained at that level is so much work I mean it's just it's just you got to just be in there you know you really do have to uh, when I was finally being offered all these movies, I was nominated for an Academy Award and a Golden Globe for Hot Lips and, and everything. I, I, this is my thinking, and this has to do, I know it does, with my, with, without my sense of an overview of what life is really about. And I think that had to do with my lack of education and my, my learning things, you know, uh, and the fact that I was a child of the 60s coming out of, hey, we got to follow our bliss, you know. <laughs> and, so I turn movies down and get a band and go on the road for three months, you know, and uh, I could have done both easily, but, uh, and I've always sung, always alongside, and it's kept me from being a victim in a real wonderful way, you know, that if I wasn't making a movie, that I immediately had the music to go to, you know, and so all during my film career, I've, I've put shows together, I've made half albums, I've made demos, I've worked with... Barry Manilow and Bobby Womack as producers, and I've been in Nashville and Muscle Shoals and just everywhere. And uh, and then along came Laura Nero and Janis Joplin, and I was just like, whoa, just let out those feelings, just, you know, uh, raw, you know, go for it. 
And, uh, and so this journey has been long. Someone said, how come you want to talk about this stuff that didn't happen? And I think, I think of that as a badge of, hey, man, I'm working. I wanted soul. You know, I wanted to, to be the real deal. And in the beginning, when uh, Russ Reagan signed me to this DECA, my first album, he said, and you'll never make it. And don't say uh, Barbara Streisand, because she started out as a singer. And so I think a lot of my impetus when I was going on the road to show that I guess, some singer that I wasn't even that crazy about, a very successful singer, it was not my favorite music. And he said, if you want to be taken seriously, you know. So I think that's... That was in the beginning of why I had to go on the road and why I had to, you know, do three shows a night and suffer was to show somebody, you know. And then the music just doesn't let you go. And so it isn't about proving or being great or any of it. It's just you can't help it. It's just like with the, with the acting. I just have never been able to, to stop. My shrink said once, do you just keep singing whether anybody wants to hear you or not? I said, I guess I do. Uh, I, then I met a, a, a doctor named uh, Melton Wexler, who started the Hereditary Disease Foundation, who was a scientist and did so many incredible things in his life. And anyway, so he's been a big part of why and why what he said that it's all bullshit unless you're having a good time. And then Altman, as I say, was a huge uh, contributor. My husband has been a big believer in me no matter what I've done, and he's a brilliant guy, of course, because he believes in me. But And, and then musically, uh, when I'd met Chris, and then I said, you know, I feel like going up emotionally and musically, I don't know how to get down. And he says, screw getting down, just go up. They're the kind of songs that are so easy to, to love. Uh, Chris Caswell has written three of them. He wrote one that sounds like an old 40s standard, but isn't. And then I got a Creedence Clearwater. My mom and dad were like going up. But at this moment in my life, after working on my music all these years, I got this. I mean, I've made a lot, I've made several albums, half albums, but this is a real quality piece. So I'm hoping you all will. And I wanted soul, that's why I went out on the road. You know, I didn't know it was going to take another 30 years to get it just because I lived so long, but... Uh... Guys, I had a dream, a long time coming. Go, yeah, great. So it ended up Sally because everything else sounded too hokey and uh, precious. But I'm working with an award-winning uh, producer named Val Garay who won the album of the year with Kim Carnes for uh, Grammy, you know, for uh, Betty Davis Eyes, and then he's worked with James Taylor and Bonnie Raitt and, and Linda Ronstadt and all kinds of people. And I work out a little club in, in L.A. called Genghis Cohen just to bring in new material with a great keyboard guy that Hal David of Backrack and David put me insisted I work with, and he plays bass with. Anyway, Hal, uh, Val Garay came in one night. And he kept coming. And about 18 shows later, he said, let's make an album. And, he, you know, and we used the material that Chris and I have been working on the last three years. There's a, you know, it's scary when you hear there are some originals in here, but they're the kind of songs that are so easy to, to love. Uh, Chris Caswell has written three of them. He wrote one that sounds like an old 40s standard, but isn't. And then I got a Creedence Clearwater. So... What this album does for me, and it isn't arriving, I've got other albums in my, you know, and I'm on the road, and I, what I want is the visit, what I want now is the visibility. I want to be able to, I have such an amazingly great time, because all these years, I got free. I suddenly got free, and Altman was a big supporter of my music, too, you know, and he'd come to all my shows, and, and he sponsored nights, you know, where I'd have video and intermissions and, you know, singers and bands and everything, and he'd say, don't talk, don't talk. I don't give a crap what you say. I want to hear you sing. I'd love to hear you sing. And and uh, and giggle and give in. And, and my Anna was saying, you know, if it's, if it's not fun, it's all BS. I don't know if you can swear in Canada. Yeah. It just... Uh, it really started happening, and, and out on the road, how I love to sing to audiences, and I, I've ended up, you know, in the beginning, I was afraid of audiences. Oh my God, what if I'm not gonna be good? But my show's called The Anti-Show. 
I can't make a mistake. And it's perfect for someone with learning issues. I thought, how did I get this lucky at this time of my life? I can come in and, you know, particularly gang is, but I can do it. I'm up in San Francisco the last week at the place called the Raz Room, a beautiful club in, in uh, the Nico Hotel. And I can come on with a lyric sheet, or if I drop a lyric, I say, hey, but you can always see a show where everybody knows the lyrics and the music. You know, when do you get to see this is the inner workings of, you know, I just can't. And so I get more laughs. I have no writing, no plan. We, we finally, Chris and I finally, you know, we have a layout of the songs, but we don't necessarily follow it, you know. And if we have something new, particularly in L.A., we love to, to get a song and we go, oh, let's put that in tonight. And we don't even, you know, hardly know it. He's like taking, you know, stuff off the record. and. But it's, it's become such a love fest. And, and when I was up there just last week, everyone kept saying, it's so much fun. We had so much fun. They lined up for my CDs, and some bought two and three. But now, what I feel the audience wants to see how I react in the moment. And that's what makes me happy. It's what makes them happy. And I can go out, and I can, I can do anything. I don't, you know, and it's just given me such a freedom. And I so hope. Before I go to the great beyond, if you're listening, you Canadian filmmakers and everybody, that, that I can do a couple of really wonderful roles where I can bring what I've learned from this journey with my music into my acting, you know, because I don't, I don't even really understand how I've been an actress all these years. I think, how did I do it? My God, you know, learning, reading the scripts and working on the roles and finding the characters, you know, I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm not scared. I, I just did a film, just a television film that they called me a Hallmark film in, the, in post-production. But I really did enjoy it. I mean, I, 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 was, I was scared. I was a little scared. I thought, I don't know if I'm even going to like this, you know. Also, in, in music, you get to sleep in. You know? And i got to say that Canada, speaking of this, and this is why I know you all will rush out to Amazon or my website, sallykellerman.com, or, or any, any of the major stores or iTunes or anything like that. But to get one because I've made movies. I always felt like your crews, you know, practiced on me because I've made several movies in Canada and I got nominated for Best Actress in a picture I did with Tony Curtis and Lou Gossett. And we shot, it was a co-production between Israel and, um, and Canada.